Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Joining me today for the first time is Rahul Devan. You may have seen his channel, Sangam Talks. He's a very well-respected speaker and he's an entrepreneur in a previous life. And now he has made something else his life mission. We're going to talk about that in the form of a few Q&As. And, and this is going to be a fairly informal session. But let's first welcome Rahul Ji. Rahul Ji, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaste. Thank you very much. Heard so much about you. Seen some of your work. And so first time, thank you for inviting me. Pleasure is all mine, Rahul. And uh, see, I had recently done one uh, uh, you know, short monologue about how the Ram Mandir, Puna Pratishta, Pran Pratishta of Ram Lala is going to pave way for many of us to rediscover our roots. When you go back and look at India, since 780, some part or the other was under attack. And, and this has actually changed the demographic structure somewhat. But it also leaves the door open for everyone who wants to come back to their roots, to rediscover it and come back. And you are seeing this change, not just here, but all the way out to like your United Arab Emirates, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and where, where Islam has really taken root. And those people are reviewing it and saying, hmm, there are some things that need to change here. So that change needs to propagate. It may not happen overnight, but you have a mission. Let's start with your mission statement and then I'll start having a few questions for you. You can take it from there. Over to you, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you. So, um, um, by the way, I'm, I'm still in my entrepreneurial journey. I've, I've sold one business uh, earlier. I'm a little bit of an investor now. Uh, just a little background. So, it's, it's a new chapter, but that chapter is not over <laughs> of entrepreneurship. So, just wanted to set that. But I've been running Sangam Talks for eight years and my nonprofit charitable trust for since 2006. So it's been quite a lot of time. So all of this has sort of gone alongside now Sangam Talks and Sariu Trust and all my social projects uh, uh, become the center point of the next chapter. With that context, uh, I have two big agendas going forward. One is to... Um, ensure one is a ghar vapsi program and i'll just talk about that a little bit in detail uh, the second is actually i'm, I'm working on creating a 1000 crore hindu fund it's a extremely audacious goal i've set i've set myself three years from navratri that has already gone by uh, and you know maybe we can delve on that a little bit i know and i'll keep the focus of this uh, on 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 the ghar vapsi uh, project uh, that i have so in 2016, I read an article in Swarajya by Sanjeev Sanyal, uh, which gave me this clarity. Uh, it was about the article, if I remember correctly, was called The Architecture of Hinduism. And there Sanjeev talks, uh, talks about not Ghar Vapsi as such, but he talks about expansionary strategies that Hindus need to adopt. He talks about um, that Hindus, uh, sorry, the um, uh, anti-conversion laws that we've all been after in Karnataka, in Telangana, everywhere, right? I mean, we've been, UP has some, uh, some anti-conversion laws version of its own. Uh, Sanjeev be believes in something called the um, chaos theory or uh, complex adaptive systems, I'm sorry, yeah, complex adaptive systems. And what that really means is that uh, just like stock markets and just like cities, Hinduism is very similar. It keeps on evolving with new data, with new information that it absorbs. And, you know, what that means is that it's firstly very adaptive. And so for a system like this, he says, are the only systems which survive. Um, he draws parallels between dinosaurs dying and perhaps some Abrahamic religions without actually specifically calling them out, if you like. Um, and he takes the view that Hinduism is going to um, last, which we all believe it will. However, he calls out the that, you know, in a, in a, a system which is deflating. And honestly, we have been deflating for, for quite some time, uh, right? Losing both land and losing... Uh, to demographic rise of non-Indic religions, if you like, within India as well. 
in a deflate in a deflating system he says that defensive strategies are never going to work you have to have expansionist strategies in place and that sort of was a really jarring moment for me it sort of gave me clarity for you know whenever my next half of my life would happen this is 2016 so i was still in the midst of my business but i basically really got that clarity and you know over the last few years have built upon this um and i re- recently did a talk uh on sangam talks as now after selling my business i i i can now start com- coming out in uh, with my face i've stayed in the background all these years and uh, hence i did the first talk on garbapsi i did this at uh, goa at the hindu janjagriti samiti uh, annual conference so spoke to about 8 900 hindus who were collected in in the auditorium got a huge huge response from people um so i'm going to pause and maybe take uh, if you want me to yeah talk um, that, that's an excellent introduction thus far uh, rahul so see see we are um, sanatanis we are seekers and if you look at the abrahamic religions they are believers there's a book and you cannot paint outside the, uh, the boundaries you cannot paint outside the lines you have to stay within that doesn't matter if there are doubts that arise in your mind about what is said in that book whether it is applicable to modern day none of that stuff is allowed right so i'm sure there are a lot of people there who are having these questions but they are afraid to ask and and whereas you know sanatana dharma or hinduism whichever way you want to look at it it's always been that you should question even a gnostic na astic the one who doesn't believe in the existence of god god even he was encouraged to ask these questions and many gnostics became astikas because they did the research and they said my presumptions were wrong so in this is to me like you said that let's go on the offensive you you know that you have a friend who was probably a, a christian or a, a, or a muslim today in india and see at least in muslim uh, in islam it is prohibited to convert out of the religion you will be killed so you are up against some serious odds so and and, and when we say that let's do a ghar wapsi to me it seems like one way to do this and again i'm just saying one way is that if one person converts right then you can you know try to bully him and and try to even you know god forbid kill the person but if an entire community let's say there are 1000 households in a small mohalla if everybody converts then that's that critical mass will prevent any such thing from happening this was just my thought so i want you to kind of flesh out your idea of ghar wapsi a little bit more you want to convert 10 you want to bring back i should say 10 crore back into the sanatani fold and you have, you, you have set yourself a time limit where would you start now so firstly um i am not on a mission to convert 10 crore people that's not that's not a mission i want i have taken for myself what the mission i'm on is to open hindus minds of hindu organizations across the country in uh opening their arms to returning muslims my feeling is and this is not just you know gut and all of this this happens all around us we refuse to see them we refuse to see data we refuse to see facts people want to come back uh i was shared a video recently i have a few slides here uh, just two or three slides uh, sure. i don't know sure, how sure. to go show ahead. them go ahead go ahead yeah yeah uh, yeah absolutely how, how do i share let me see slide so just go to present just go to present Uh, yeah. are the slides in ppt but, or uh, pdf yes they are but i'll share my screen um yeah entire screen i'm sorry for holding you up and your audience okay do you see my screen yeah it's coming up now just one second i need to open it and I, i need to add it go ahead do you see this yeah very good okay so this is a video sent to me by um, you know a friend in the us when when he heard my uh, my talk this is very interesting i'm not going to play the whole video 
but for your audience they may want to you know look at the take a screenshot and then mm. go back and look at this this is one family one mm. large family of many brothers half of the family is muslim and half is hindu they live 7 kilometers away from the ram mandir in ayodhya and this journalist i have huge respect for her she travels from dioband to all these places fearlessly fantastic woman this is a channel called raj dharma and i found this video there these guys actually have a bahi khata if you see this on the table they have a bahi khata which actually traces mm. their generations back to about 8 9 generations back and they realize that seven generations earlier they split some brothers became Hind- uh, muslims and then the lineage of muslim started if you see this video it's a long video they actually are saying ram to hamare bhagwan hai they are uh, they've all gone together for seeing the construction of the ram mandir this man who's on video started crying when the journalist was asking him what do you feel about ram on video he started crying ki ram to mere dev hai you know and she is asking him questions and aap musliman kyun nahi hai kyun hai ghar wapsi kyun nahi karte the issue he says is that the community not the brothers not the family but the community at earlier it was attempted uh, one or two generations back but was prevented by the community and by the village community this is what i am trying to say this attitude of not a taking muslims back has to change in my presentation i actually speak about this very famous video of this molvi called bilal philips uh do you see this as well as the side yeah yeah yeah. Okay. yeah 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 muslims are leaving islam um you know i've presented a lot of data uh, and reports um like the khalil bilichi report which came out a few years ago and it talks about reasons of why are muslims leaving islam globally in north america canada and us it's estimated that about 24% muslims have left islam okay and what are we doing with them what are they doing some of them become atheists and start to hate everything that is religion including hinduism like there is a posted prophet and you know haris sultan and others which is okay i don't have too many problems with them as long as they are they have left islam um the there are uh, others a large part of them actually become christian and there is tons and tons of videos from the us of how to get muslims who are leaving islam why they are returning to christianity and there is this massive propaganda done by christians on talking about these cases and case studies and you know talking that talking about on social media to attract more and more uh, coming back to become christians coming to become christians not back and while we hindus are doing nothing about it and this is the same trend in india i don't know if you're following the ex muslims in india but people like ex muslim sahil and a few others they're doing a he was on our channel sahil great, was on right? our channel yeah wonderful yeah. right so you know great job uh, just sahil alone but it's not sahil alone anymore right there is samir there is apostate imam there is dara shikho there is uh, quran wala or such wala earlier tons and tons of them who are coming up and every day people you know these guys are they are watching videos people are watching videos uh, gatherings of of muslims i came across a recent video i don't have it here of a big uh, naqshbandi preacher and in a large gathering of several hundred people this kid gets up and says aap ex muslims ke bare mein kya sochte hain then the guy says excuse me what is your question you know whatever so he explains ki matlab hum sab ko wo raah se hata rahe hain to hum kya jawab dein basically what's happening is this is becoming mainstream in india and this is reaching thanks to social media thanks to youtube and it's sort of not you know constrained view of 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 this for example uh, mass reporting and all of that thankfully is not helping on all of these uh this is becoming i mean this it's reaching people in in kashmir I, i know because people have contacted me there are people from bihar jharkhand mumbai madhya pradesh all over the place who are who are leaving islam and we people are not willing to take them in 
I I will stop presenting here and we'll come back to another slide I want to show you in a in a little bit. But I want to talk about one incident that happened with me about five, six years back or something. Uh, I had the opportunity of meeting in Delhi uh, Puri Shankaracharya ji, uh, Nishchilananda ji. He was visiting uh, the Jagannath Puri temple or Jagannath temple in, in uh, South Delhi, which is where I live. And one of my friends invited me that if you would like to come, you know, it will be a great opportunity. So I was, of course, very humbled. So sat through the, uh, you know, the his his lecture, his discourse, satsang, and, you know, then just participated in some bhajan and all of that. And then, you know, she said that there are questions if, for some people. So I was allowed some audience. I had prepared a letter that time. Uh, the thought in my head was, and like I said, it's been there since 2016, uh, that we need to have expansionist strategy. So I had a letter uh, written in Hindi and an English version both, and I presented that to him, and he asked me what is what what is contained in this. So I told him that uh, 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 Swamiji that. Basically, Hinduism may wapas lohon ko lane ke liye, agar aapke pad se aap sab bolenge, tab ye possible loga. Nahi to hum bhot constraint hai aur humne sirf Arya Samaj ke liye chhod diya hai. Shreerji, I got a massive, uh, you know, phatkar from him. He was very angry, very, very angry at me for saying that, for even suggesting that. He actually said, I remember that tum jaise log, Hindu dharm ko aur todenge, aur kharaab kar denge, and stuff like that. And I was honestly shaken up. I had no clue why. Okay. So I was a little lost, came back, started asking a lot of my friends who are very dharmic and read the dharma shastras. And some of them agreed that, you know, we need to. The point was, he was saying that you will weaken Hinduism further. Okay. Um, um, now, I got the same view from quite a few other people. Uh, at the same time, you know, I didn't have the strength or the courage, you know, six years back or whatever, whenever that was to really question him, which I do now, <laughs> uh, you know, without getting into Guru Ninda, uh, you know, and, and aspects like that. Um, but we have no answer. And the reason I say is we have no other answer, no other solution is because I I firmly believe uh, that we are heading towards a civil war in the country. Okay, uh, it's already going on with all these random events. Like Omendra says, use a specific term for it: random, you know, lone wolf events, which we've been rules. Seeing. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. rules, rules, something like some term he uses. Now, and that's true. So it's it's not that we are only heading. It is a low scale civil war already. And not only Hindus, but Muslims are also talking about it. Um, the Obandis, everywhere, you know, Ram Mandir was only, is only exasperating this view that you're now oppressing us even more. This is a mainstream view. Um, just today morning, I saw uh, 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 another Malvi who actually was very sarcastically talking about the ASI report, which came out two days back saying that, which says that there is a lot of evidence we found and uh, he was being asked that uh, evidence mil raha hai aapki kya tippadi hai he says meri tippadi evidence pe nahi hai meri tippadi apni samaj ke logon par hai jo ye bol rahe hain ki hum ye nahi mante asi ki report so he is basically saying ab inka agla kadam ye hoga ki they will say that uh, judiciary ko bhi nahi mante phir hum is rashtra ko bhi nahi mante phir kahenge ki ab hamare ko alag ek hissa alag de do so jo main bol raun, right? that we are heading towards a civil war and my view is another partition if we don't change things is actually mainstream that Malvi just I mean just two days back right this is report is from two days ago and he was talking about it today morning that these people will come and say uh, ab ko ek aur, ra, ek aur tukra kar do. and he called this these guys tukre, tukre gang so he was being sarcastic so nice guy uh, but this I know that the Sang uh, organization, very closely associated with the Sang RSS and others, get very angry. I brought this up with, I remember in Pune, uh, I was part of a group three years back, and I brought this up that we are heading towards a civil war. 
and i believe in other partition where there is no other it's not that randomly people will be allowed to be massacred and will go on and on like abraham abraham lincoln allowed i mean there's what is the conclusion of such things what is the direction we are heading in and that there is an absolute need for hindu organizations to give a direction to the hindu samaj um and when i recommend when i suggested that we are heading towards a civil war and perhaps a partition everybody in the room was really really angry with me nahi hone denge there were tables being thump you know table thumping sorry yes please go ahead uh, rahul i wanted to continue i'm just going to drop out from here i need to research on one data point because i have a i have an observation for that i need to get the data point right so just continue i'll be out of the window everything is going on fine and i'll rejoin okay. you in just 30 to 40 seconds huh? all ahead. right so your audience is still there so i'm talking to the audience okay good so um yeah so um you know i was basically saying my my view is that uh, you know unless we change something about uh, and change the course of our trajectory we are we are in trouble and uh, while yes um, you know ram mandir is a massive landmark moment in in our civilizational history and uh, you know in the history of the modern india which is nothing but a a new version of an ancient civilization um you know i i think it is time for us to 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 do something and embrace uh, returning uh, uh, muslims especially those who want to come back you're back now it's going to be a little yes, easier yes yes i have the data now so okay I, i'll let you to finish ahead? your thought and then i'll add i i want you to finish your thought then i'll add what i wanted to okay go ahead okay so uh see if you see anecdotally uh, just uh, bageshwar bhava bageshwar dham baba uh, every day there are muslims not only from india but even from bangladesh and other places they actually come and tell him that we are ram bhakts and we are your bhakts and we want to convert look at three three events burka burka clad women turn up baba ramdev he has a large following of muslims these are people who are muslims in name only they have no belief in the violence that the quran propagates for example they have no belief in kafirhood right they they are they are good muslims and so uh, you know and like anand ranganathan actually they are probably bad muslims in anand ranganathan's uh, um, terminology because they are humanists you know they they like human values they have a sense of morals and ethics and they see their hindu people their friends their neighbors their brother sister whatever you know people outside and they see very good behavior they don't see oppression and all of this in daily lives right and they and the, i spoke to four ex muslims in in my office recently and did an interview it's on sangam talks Uh, they were on record saying that we you know we actually feel more secure when we are surrounded in with in hindu neighborhoods it's, it's just common uh, a bjp uh, mp from rajasthan on a, over a dinner conversation whispered that to me some years back that unless i'm surrounded by hindus in my residential block i don't feel safe these people are bad muslims in anand's terminology and there are in my view there are crores of them out there sita ram goelji in in solutions for for solving the islamic problem in india had a couple of solution the most important and the first was that we need to appeal to the humanism of indian muslims unki manavta ko hame appeal karni padegi jab and this you know how do you do that you you basically tell them about the violence in the quran and the values it projects and and so on and so forth which is the job of ex muslims yes people like neera jatri uh, are doing a wonderful job but people when they do this from inside when insiders do it it's a totally different level which is the job ex muslims do which is why we need to blindly support ex muslims and their whole movement um and you know when these people want to return when they learn about islam they basically do not want to live there anymore 
and we people do not open our arms because of orthodoxy because of kaun si jati mein jayenge shaadi uh, kisse karenge gazet ke liye bahut paisa lagta hai it costs up to 12000 rupees to formally convert and so on and so forth who's going to do all that lawyers kahan aayenge all of this ecosystem is missing only arya samaj does this and we unfortunately have outsourced all of this to arya samaj only that needs to change we need to have you know 10000 arya samajes within india and so my mission is actually to have a board on every temple hum ghar wapsi karwate hain andar adhyaksh se sampark kare number niche diya hua hai when that starts happening in every city tier 2 3 1 4 whatever then i would feel that 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 that's what i'm working towards okay so long monologue your data and any questions thank you so much so um you talked about how uh, one shankaracharya exploded when you uh, asked him a question so i have a small uh, a bit of a perspective on this in 1981 in a small village in rural tamil nadu called meenakshi puram meenakshi puram 3 300 dalits i am also telling it for our viewers benefit because it happened 43 years ago 42 or 43 years ago in meenakshi puram 300 dalits converted to islam in one single day that time this was unheard of that something like this could happen and many people started talking oh my god what is going on then see the thing is the caste divisions were still there 1981 that's the hinduism also has some fault lines that probably got exploited in trying to do this but one shankaracharya the kanchi shankaracharya jayendra saraswati he decided to do something about it i think it was um, maybe 10 years later or i don't remember when but he went back to that same village minakshi puram and at that point of time shankaracharyas were not known to mingle with the dalits and he actually tried he went there he ate at their place this was unheard of rahul ji i mean this this does doesn't happen and and uh, then he also participated actively in trying to bring about a negotiated settlement between muslims and hindus in ram mandir and he came very close and then again both sides backed off now the litigation route had to be taken and finally in 2019 we got the verdict what ended up happening was in 2004 after the sonia gandhi led upa government came to power on deepavali day the same jayendra saraswati and his next in line pontiff vijayendra saraswati both were imprisoned jailed in uh, andhra pradesh so there, this was clearly clearly an edict coming from somewhere you know where it is and and that if this guy is given the same kind of rope then he is going to convert it took several years before he could be released and he was not the same man after that so there is a certain amount of brow beating if you will by the government machinery to try and not allow hindus to open their hearts and gates to people who have already converted this is clearly as i as i can see and i am actually surprised that bjp doesn't use this example against this uh, this uh, uh, 50 year old juvenile called rahul gandhi yeah because he was very much in uh, he was an mp there his mother was the de facto prime minister of the country and and you have to hold them responsible for it why i am saying all this rahul that the shankaracharyas got really afraid that you know do we have to go through jail and uh, he was actually beaten up rahul jayendra saraswati ji was actually beaten up can you imagine if see, there is there is this uh, you know imam who is wanted for murder these people don't even dare touch him he has got so many cases against him they don't even touch him so yeah, see, yeah. this kind of uneven treatment also is a problem anyway long story short i'm just trying to give you an explanation that perhaps the shankaracharya was mindful of what had happened to one of his you know colleagues and maybe that is one of the maybe. reasons but yeah yeah but but you see that's why i'm saying you look at meenakshi puram 300 families one shot from one religion to the other 
what prevents the muslim community let's say there is a small usually mohalla is what you see you they pay, they tend to be in one group concentrated group you build your own temple one of you can read the scriptures you don't have to start doing all the you know rituals in a temple just doing you know aarti and 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 saying jai shri ram is enough to start with why are you waiting for some other community to open their arms and say okay you come back instead we we know that there is a temple in this mohalla we build this temple we make this thing our own this is this is our uh, you know this is our deity murti and we will pray aisa ho sakta hai i don't know if this has been thought through any any idea of something like because kashmir i see is the fit candidate for this they are relatively newly converted 500 years old aurangzeb was the one that really really aggressively tried to convert the pandits to muslims right 16th century 17th century something like that so 500 years any, any ideas about looking at this things from a slightly different angle yeah so i mean couple of aspects one do we need to simplify rituals 100% we need to we need to firstly have a formal shuddhi process or whatever we want to call it a garvapsi yes, process yes. which is something very very simple and not elaborate uh, not necessarily do a pura yagya or homam and all of that but something right. really simple okay and then we need to have very simplified codified rituals 100% we need to do that uh, which you know just you just do these two or three things and then that's it that you don't need to do anything else or not believe in anything else and you're hindu okay so no doubt about that can current muslims whole mohallas can they turn and uh, you know suddenly become uh, hindus you have to understand that the fear among muslims is so high they don't even talk to their families children ad- adolescents um, grown up you know people in their 20s 30s who are leaving islam don't talk to their parents about their views they ask questions and when they don't get answers in their minds they are leaving islam they come on these channels of ex muslims and say we've left but we don't talk about it in public the fear of uh, being thrown out of the community is so high i'll give you an example a person called i think i should be okay naming maybe most people won't know dinesh chauhan chauhan converted during the aurangzeb period i met him he returned um, took the, he took his name back uh, dinesh chauhan but it was only a pseudo name because uh, you know when he was mingling with hindus he was cut off from his business his business was shut down he was thrown out thankfully his uh, uh, wife was with him or not i don't even remember that but he got possession of his kids who he renamed it's very very hard for these guys very hard that man struggled and i know struggles of quite a few of them because i'm in touch with a lot of ex muslims and i fund a lot of ex muslims by the way and um, they're in a terrible state they don't even know who to talk to and who to not to who to confide in okay so it's not that they can all come out in the open and everybody will agree that movement has to be triggered from outside and that outside has to be our sanyasis has to be the you know various levels of of our uh, sages and gurus and uh, spiritual organizations it has to be the inner sheets of the shankracharyas and has to be all the layers you know even right up to uh, baba bageshwar uh, i i know in my mind today if instead of sitting on the fence and saying uh, you know um, just sort of in a in a coy manner if you like uh, you know not openly he will say that i'll accept if you want to return ana zaruri nahi hai then he will say uh, ram ram japiye hanuman ka kare ye, ye you know this is sitting on the fence will probably not serve us in the long term uh, i hope to meet him some day and hopefully you know in chhota mo badi baat but make this uh, suggestion to him to come out openly if he makes an appeal today <laughs> that i am going to convert people i i my gut tells me 2 3 crore will come i'm not kidding the mass following and the power he wields right now is uncanny and insane amount of power he wields in the entire hindi speaking belt uh, 
and if now Baba Ramdev joins him and Sri Sri Ravi Shankar joins him, Sadhguru joins him, if they all start formalizing this, we will have a tsunami of returning Muslims which is going to be unstoppable. This 10 crore goal was going to be met like that, honestly. But they have to do this. They have to give it structure. They will all have to say, here is a method. Here are simplified rituals which are of my sampradaya. Baba Bageshwar Dham will say, here is a Hanuman mantra you say. Just do this, you know, go to a nearby temple, put some water. Sadhguru may say, nothing needed, just start calling, you know, whatever. But things like these have to happen. Uh, this whole thing about ki, no, no, it's okay for you to keep your name. Just start believing in this. All of this is not going to work with us in the long term. Very true. Uh, Rahul, in fact, a template like this has been laid out in the past for us. 91 Parsis landed on the shores of India, Western India, uh, many, many hundreds of years ago. 85 male and 6 female ch with children. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the king of that area asked this the head of this 91 people group, what can you do for us? And, and that leader said, you know, can you, gesture, can you get me some milk? And somebody gave him a cup of milk. And he, he goes through his bags, takes out a little bit of what is chini, you know, sugar, puts it in there, mixes it, and then says, here, drink it. So we will sweeten. That was his way of saying, because language wasn't established yet. The yeah. new new group of people coming into India. And at that yeah. point of time, the Raj Guru of that king, he laid down like you shall do these things. And we will be, we will, you will be taken care of. Today the Parsi community is 40 to 50,000 strong. They tend to marry among themselves. That's okay. I mean, but but you see them as one of the most accomplished people in India. Yeah. Very, very, yeah. very up affluent upscale society, very liberal in their approach and ideas, very entrepreneurial. The, the, the template has been laid out because they have to do a few things. Like for example, in weddings, they have to wear a sari. The, way, the lady has to wear a sari. You have to chant some mantras while you are doing a wedding. But beyond that, there are no restrictions. They worship yeah. fire, Agni, which, is, which used to be one of our gods. In fact, any puja you cannot have without a havan. Yeah. Agni is a sakshi for us. You know, five gods, Agni has to be there. Otherwise, there is no, you know, Homa without Homa, you don't know anything. So, these kinds of things are already laid down. What you are saying is absolutely right. Somebody who has earned, uh, you know, the respect of the society, whether it is Sri Sri Ravi Shankar or uh, Jaggi Vasudev or uh, Bhageshwarji, all this, they have to, you know, you don't have to come out and say it in public. But you guys can get together and formulate, this is the way we are going to welcome all our brothers yes. and sisters back. And, and one thing that you mentioned makes a lot of sense that, you know, we do ghar wapsi here, please contact this person here. That's a very, very useful uh, suggestion. Um, and and, and this, is, this is spread like wildfire, I tell you. Also, yes. we have to tell them a way that you can stay within your community you just have to do a few things like this. You don't need to declare that you are no longer a Muslim. Because like you said, see, Sanatana, so, it's not a religion, it's a dharma. Right. No, Sri Ayurji, I will I will disagree with a few points. Firstly, you said that not say not say this in public, you know, all the gurus and uh, say Bhageshwar Baba. They will have to. Um, actually, whenever I talk about now this Gharvapsi movement, a lot of uh, Sangha-related organizations actually tell me, oh, we're already doing this work. Um, then my next question is, then why don't you talk about in, open, in public? No, no, we can't talk about in public. That's not going to work anymore. You can't because otherwise you're just saying, oh, we converted 98 Muslims back here, right? In six months. Then 1,000 Christians came back. There are these news reports. That is not good enough. We don't have 1,000 years Okay, so we have to make this public. All of them have to come out in public and actually have the courage, the audacity, all of that to say that, look, we have to convert. The second thing is, it's not good enough to remain with Muslim names and become what we call Swadeshi Muslims. It's not good enough also. They have to take formal Hindu names. There are a lot of complexities uh, for this. And let me give you just one or two. If you do not formally declare yourself with a Hindu name, you can't go and get cremated. So you will end up 
getting going to a muslim uh, graveyard and and who they will also not accept you because you are ex muslim or whatever is these are real practical problems that they face and the idea of not having anybody to take care of with proper rituals at the time of death is one of the m- biggest fears that muslims have at this point in time you have to address that the only way to address that is to do a formal conversion so it has to be a formal box you were in this box now you're going to come in this box there is no other answer um i want to make another point here sarvesh tiwari lives in atlanta if i'm not wrong he did a few series of lectures uh, uh with us in sangam talks and he clarified this for me that islam within itself has such solid structures that even if you convert out one or the other generation maybe not this generation maybe somebody is in in thought and in spirit left islam but if you remain in that box a very high likelihood is that the next generation will become a kattarwadi the structures of islam these wheels keep churning relentlessly you can't leave it at that okay let's look at the case of the mongols i mean islam was wiped out from the face of this earth during um, chinggis khan's invasions of baghdad he basically massacred 90% of all populations or whatever number whatever percentage uh, and then they moved in but the mongols themselves the third generation converted and we had this upsurge which actually gave rise to mughals had they not converted we wouldn't have had the mughals because turks became muslims and wasn't the Uh, you know the turks were basically uh, by themselves nothing it was the war tactics of the mongols which they adopted and then invaded india and all the uh, victories they had this cannot happen it has to be formal um, this box you're out of this box you're not muslim anymore now you're formally hindu with hindu names hindu rituals all of that so this is a little different from the parsi so it's also a very inclusive religion but islam and hinduism or islam and any other religion uh, it's not possible to coexist i think we have to be absolutely clear in our minds and our approach and solutions have to be driven from clarity the more we mix things up uh, i think we'll not have uh, you know this swadeshi muslim sanatani muslims idea this is a it's a hollow uh, drum it's not going to work well i want um, to probably you are having find me this No, no, no. Listen, Rahul, you you are looking at this day in and day out. I am an I am an you know outsider trying to think think that maybe there is an easy way to do this. The reason I said do it quietly was because whatever they formulate as that's what I meant. Not uh, announcing, not announcing it. I'm taking a formulation of how you want to do this to this to this. Because if four sure. or five religious heads get together and come with a press conference and say we've all agreed and we support, this shall be the steps. but the well, negotiations itself right that will get derailed if you ah, break it start giving that's fair what enough I'm but one just has to come out and my my all my hopes are pinned on uh, dhirendra shastri ji of uh, bageshwar dham honestly i'm going to share and probably this will be a good sure. uh, you know way to perhaps you know uh, close the conversation with this one sure, at sure, least sure, one last uh, piece i want to show yes. you yes yes uh, once again i'm sharing my slide you see this Yeah, I'm seeing that. Yeah. Okay, so I brought this up with uh, Chandra Chud Ghosh, uh, who's written Conundrum on Subhash Chandra Bose. And when I talked to him, we we uh, uh, sponsored the DU Lit Fest uh, just ten days back or so, and I met him there. And he said, Rahul, do you know the one politician or one public figure who talked about ghar vapsi as a tool for foreign policy? I said, Well, no, ma'am. Maybe it was the Swamis. Swami Shraddhanand or Swami Ramanand Charya Kabir's guru who did conversions. He said Subhash Chandra Bose, and he sent me this note. In the continent of Africa, only two religions are preached at present: Christianity and Islam. Why should Hinduism not be preached there? He says. Sister Nivedita maintained that Hinduism must be aggressive. Swami Vivekananda was of the same opinion, and with this idea, he went to Chicago, and he then he writes. Can you believe this? <laughs> this is. <laughs> Netaji right. writing that formal conversion and Hinduism must become aggressive. Please do note that you know the Cholas spread Hinduism 
to all to all of southeast southeast asia cambodia to singapore vietnam philippines all of this it wasn't simply by trade as we say it right it was actually by proselytizing our means of proselytizing and spreading our our views are different we are not aggressive it's not by the sword it is it is it's mixed with values culture business money all of this right it's it's a soft power but this whole thing of that no no we don't convert this thing has to drop and that is the specific mission i'm on thank you so much rahul and we have a few questions from our viewers uh, just give me a minute i need to sort these things out and while sure. you are answering questions you might see me being busy please don't mind because i don't have my yeah. help uh, editor he's he's away for a wedding so uh, okay. i will be just in the background lining up the question while you are answering the question so i hope uh, okay. that works here we go sure. the first question from magnet ranga what he wants to know is jay sri ram looking forward to kashi and mathura 2 being solved in our favor how do you, how soon do you expect it to happen two years is what vishnu ji is saying <laughs> vishnu shankar jain so we'll wait for two years no problems you know uh, and uh, you know just so that you know and you have audience and i i must talk, say this i got so emotional after you know he was explaining the asi report i was crying and then i wrote to my team of editors at uh, sangam talks that i've been trying to reach out to a lot of uh, uh, vedika and tantric uh, people who are practitioners that could we do homams for you know betterment of the country for uh, you know some specific people so i was trying to reach them recently about vishnu shankar jain and his father hari shankar jain ji that could you do this so they were saying well we'll need them their approval and date of birth and so on so all of that so i thought okay let us do something simple and i'm saying this not for you know giving myself a pat on the back or whatever or publicity but i'm saying this hopefully it'll inspire other people four five of us got together and did a mahamrityunjay today morning at 7 am for vishnu ji and his father hari shankar ji to for their protection for their well being and all of that so i mean we all have to be in deep 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 gratitude for these two people thank you so much and and viewers we always tell you i have forgotten to i've been forgetting to tell you you have to have a hashtag ask even if you don't put rahul at the end usually a first name of the guest because it's easy for me to search through the there is uh, rahul you won't believe it hundreds of comments hundreds of comments now I, i'm just trying to sip sip through that to get some questions so that i can ask you you know good questions because i can't just arbitrarily take something i have to make sure that it is uh, you know pertinent to our topic and so on so viewers always you know have the hashtag in handy makes our job much easier if i had help i wouldn't be so troubled but today i'm handicapped a bit thank you dr vigar sanatan is on the way to annihilation sadhuvad to rahul divan ji for taking up the most important project i have a million queries but impossible to ask them all here how to get in touch with you i mean just write it, write to us on sangam talks and your email or something will be forwarded to us it's sangam talks at sariyutrust.org thank you excellent thank you so much next one um dr garg again thank you i got to interact with the top rss functionary the day before yesterday the moment i broached the subject he got a reply not very different from the left the profound naivete is mind boggling yeah I, i'm telling you i don't like to criticize the rss I mean, they're doing wonderful job all of this ram temple movement we're seeing the ram temple because of the sangha but yes i i i completely i'm, I'm sorry to say i don't think we we uh, hindu samaj as as a group get any clarity from where they want us to go this whole thing about that we must not have supremacist ideas we must drop supremacist ideas uh, that we have the same dna all of the ucc all of these are not going to work with islam uh next question j bjp thank you so much devan ji you are punjabi hindu you lost 205000 square kilometers of punjab in 1947 partition punjabi hindu can't be cm punjab you don't have political power to implement okay i can't do anything about it let's do something what we can do about 
सो फिर वापसी जे बीजेपी जी यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द रीजन पाकिस्तान इज इन सच ए मेस टूडे is because when they drove out the hindus they drove out the entire administrative infrastructure of what is pakistan today no no I'll and, and sorry to interrupt you very interesting i uh, just about 15 days or 20 days back uh, i went back to interview uh, uh, praful goradia ji praful goradia ji is an old you know sang associate in new vajpayee ji very well he knows modi ji like when he was nobody uh, he was very close he told me something really interesting about jinnah he says that jinnah ne pakistan to mang liya he writes in his notes his brother and praful ji used to sit together they were all family friends uh, jinnah was from a brahmin family he is a brahmin convert from kutch hmm? and not too far away just two three generations back Right, it happened right, because right. of our mess our mess our you know he was thrown out his grandfather was thrown out of the community because because he was selling fish fish yeah <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so he says that they would all meet for drinks uh, jinnah's brother younger brother and on one occasion his brother tells me that jinnah is so scared that uh, you know we we are uh, you know the population exchange is sort of happening and hindus are leaving i he writes he tells his brother i have no hope for pakistan we these muslims don't know how to do business <laughs> so this country is going to collapse is what <laughs> so there's one of these conspiracy theories being floated about that um jinnah had invited gandhi to come to pakistan because he had realized ye maine kya kar diya this was in early 1948 and they were they were going to explore a way of coming back together as a country um and and that there were other vested interests who wanted to continue down this path and hence the unfortunate assassination again this is a conspiracy theory i don't want to go beyond that we don't have any proof for this um guru 40 wants to know now what jati they belong to this is a weird question in the modern era what jati are we talking about if you think it is necessary just pick a new jati for yourself yeah so i know this is question i don't have an absolutely clear answer i'm actually see this is a journey for me as well so i'm actually going as uh, in the next few months i'm going to be talking more and more about this meeting a lot more people and so i will have better answers but the answers i have at this point in time is arya samaj gives you a name a surname called arya you convert and you become a rahul arya that's that's very simple it i don't know what jati it is but they basically say you are arya that's very simple why can't we just start doing that um the other part is the video i showed earlier there are people and the example i gave of dinesh chauhan he knew seven generations they knew i am a chauhan there are right now hundreds of lakhs of muslims in the country who retain their surnames look at kashmir everybody is a yeah. Uh, you know call and all of this they carry their surnames they know what their lineage is they will simply have to come back the hindus on the other side have to accept them and of course they must have courage and all of the other things yeah absolutely thank you so much next question chandrashekar khandekar wants to know facility of ghar wapsi is in mumbai masur ashram since the last 80 years wonderful please talk about it uh, you know we must have google ads we must have a helpline number with uh, you know not only inside an ashram but it must be advertised we should run google ads just like muslim organizations run you go and say and they they will have helpline numbers they will have websites uh, write to us with an email with your questions and we'll help you convert all exactly how they work we need to work uh, Uh, next question from Arvind T S Y. Hi Rahul, do you have any point of view on how many people in India have converted to Christianity but have retained their S C S T O B C identity in order to remain beneficiaries of the government schemes? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not I'm not a statistician or a, you know working in this area. The only project we are doing right now is with uh, Dr J K Bajaj and Dr M D Srinivas who runs Center for Policy Studies. and we are doing some study of uh, you know a few states of people who have cleared their pcs and ias services 
and are uh, Christians and you know still retain their SCST status and all of that. But this is just very pre preliminary work that we are trying to do with in partnership. But I mean, no, I, I don't have answers. I'm not an expert. This has been it. abused way beyond your imagination, guys. In Supreme Court, there was a female judge who retired for all practical purposes till the last day when she was she revealed her religion. She was R Bhanumati. R stands for Ruth, R U T H. She had converted way back when she was younger, but she was Dalit. See, this is the thing. She rose because she was Dalit and she went all the way up to Supreme Court uh, Justice. She was so kind enough to give Chidambaram a, uh, a, a bail. When Chidambaram was knocking on the doors of Delhi High Court and he wasn't getting bail, he goes to Supreme Court. And guess where she is from? The same state as Mr. Chidambaram. Yes, she she got appointed on merit, right? No, there was a, she was a member of SC. She used that. But the thing that I don't like is that she hid her conversion information. Because the moment you reveal that you have converted to Christianity, you lose all your SC benefits. This is a loophole that people are exploiting. In fact, now, you know, Ulta Chor, Kotwal, Kodate, they are saying even if we convert... We want to enjoy the benefits that we used to enjoy before. That bill is also being looked at. I mean, th this has gone too far. There is a systemic change that needs to happen. Uh, also, I have to mention one other thing, Rahul. I mean, I grew up in Hyderabad. And in Hyderabad, you have these bastis. Suddenly, you will see a basti of Muslims. Around everybody will be Hindu. Okay, And, and we had a friend. Uh, we were trying to look for this friend. And all we knew, I mean, we had lost touch, but we knew that they used to call themselves Muslim Brahmins. So we went to the Basti and we did inquiries and they correctly pointed us to the... There was only one family like that. They are actually Brahmins who got converted, but they have maintained their habit. They are still priestly. Uh, they I don't know. They don't eat meat. But they, were, they had this thing. I don't know if you've seen this thing, Rahul. When people have incurable jaundice, that is, there is a there is a strain that gets very difficult to cure. No matter what kind of medication you take, it doesn't go away. Your liver is in, in trouble. So they, they, they take you and you go to this house. This person has some special powers. Okay. They, they'll have a cup of water and they'll have a sui, you know, needle. And, and they chant some mantras and slowly you will see the yellowness from your skin transfer into the water. And the water will become yellow. I've seen this oh. with my eyes. So I can't even say wow. that this is first, second, and third. Th that is a power that family had. You, you have to go out early in the morning. And, and they'll do it for about 15, 20 minutes. It, it, it takes place over a few days. And then the jaundice goes away. So um. wh what I'm trying to say is this thing, Sanatanita, is, you know, it's all in there. It's in completely intertwined inside. And I'm hoping yeah. that, you know, some of these things start coming out to light and, and that people will, you know, realize that they, we are all after all Sanatanis. We are, we are following the same dharma, maybe a different religion. See how we can ramp back in. So anyway, that's my two cents. Let me go to the last question today. JBJP, thank you so much. And I love you. Love and salute for being a brave Punjabi Hindu. Rahul, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's taken me years to start coming out and just allowing all of this to mull inside me uh, and you know well the hope is that more and more people come out and actually start talking about this and uh, you know we don't make uh, a few people the target of uh, the opposite side yes yes indeed and and can you believe it we have been talking for 55 minutes and uh, yeah. i did, didn't know where the time time just flew viewers no. this is <laughs> This is a request to all of you. Uh, you know, many may have questions about this. Feel free to share it. And and his video on Sangam Talks is close to a million views. And I've seen that video. And I'll put that thing in the description section so that you can take a look at that. Rahul is a very celebrated person. And, and this takes a lot of guts. Trying to take on what he's trying to do. After all, he has made his millions. He could just be, you know, another guy you know, vacationing in, in a... You know, nice island and so on and so forth. But he has retirement taken life. Himself. Retirement life, exactly. So oh, no. some of us are dabang that way. But anyway, that's a good dabang. Okay. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Rahul. I have no doubt in my mind that I'm going to be calling you back for more such, uh, you know, intellectually stimulating conversation. Once again, thank sure. you. Namaskar. Thank you very much. Thank you for hosting me.